So let's pray. Dear Father, I thank you for this opportunity to come to worship and praise your holy name. You say, one, two, three, God in your name, you've been the midst of them. We now invite you to see the present Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us in all truth. Father, we, we take this day and celebrate in our country, in this country, Father's Day. And, and what we want to do is to recognize and honor you as the Father of all things, glory to God. And, and we thank you for being the provider for all of us to seek you. And I, I like what the word says, seek you first. So we seek you and we thank you that we have a fellowship and relationship with you. And we're talking about those who believe and submitted themselves and, and allowed Christ, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, to be our savior, our deliverer, so that we can be connected back to you. I thank you and we praise your holy name as we get into your message today. Move us out of the way and the Holy Spirit have his way to teach us and guide us in all truth. In Yeshua, Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. And some of you probably have said, well, Yeshua, Yeshua is the Hebrew name for uh, Jesus for, and the actual meaning of Yeshua is Savior, amen? And, and that's what Christ has done. He is our Savior. He's, he's the one that allowed us to have that relationship, that connection back to God. There was a division between man and God after the fall of uh, Adam. And the, in the, now on top of that, we talked last week, and the fact is that the first son that was born, uh, you know, Cain, 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 Cain was off the chain as far as not doing right. We're, we're not fellowshipping, or even his fellowship or interaction with God was very negative. Uh, and that was the first seed born from Adam. And the question is, uh, What's that relationship with us uh, between us and God? And I'm telling you, and, and I want to bring it out today, is that it is more important to have a relationship, a fellowship with God the Father than have fellowship with man meaning following the will or the things of being mindful of the things of man instead of being the things of God. But the fact is, is it is a, it's a day to recognize, first of all, God the Father. Uh, that's the relationship that Christ brought to the New Testament of recognizing God as the Father, you know? So we're going to recognize and say happy Father's Day to, to God, our Father. Uh, so we'll, we'll go ahead and do that. And, 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 and the whole thing about it is be able to recognize the power of having a relationship with the Father uh, and, and what you have to do to have that relationship. And I'm not talking about it's like some to this, this, that. You know, I'm not trying to do some kind of formal. I'm saying is it is important to have a relationship with God the Father, to look at him as the Father. And look, the, the, the good father, the, some, some of us have fathers that may not have been good. Uh, many of us have had fathers that may have, uh, well, most fathers have some, what we call shortfalls, just like you. Every person is listening. We all have different shortfalls. We're not that perfect, but God the Father is. And that's, that's where we want to have a relationship with him, you know? You know, God the Father. Uh, and that's what he wants to be. It's him to say, you know, we, we, when we talk about God, sometimes we, we may have tried to bastardize it so much that we get a different understanding that God is the Father. In other words, the son will say God and, and, and not have a relationship with him. But the implying in, in saying father implies a fellowship, a relationship between you and him. You as his child, a child of God, is why we call God the father. You know, 
uh, he is the father. Uh, Jesus said, you know, you can't get to the father except for through Christ, Yeshua, right? And John 14, verse, what is six? He said, that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the father except by him. So we have to go through the son to be part of the body, to be, to allow Christ, the son, to be the head, relationship with the head to God, the father. There's a connection with it. And, and you know, another thing too, because I want to talk about today, and I'm talking about fellowship and importance of having a relationship with God is, is religious people have, have so, I guess they have messed up us so bad that we have allowed <clears throat> what I call uh, deception to come into the body of Christ where, and we I ain't talking about like recent, I'm talking about the, the deceptions of, 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 of the wars and the rumors of wars, uh, the division that, that people have. I'm sitting there, I'm going to talk a little bit about the, uh, when, when, when people have all the, the, the mass shootings and stuff like that. And, and, and no, these phenomena are not new in this country anyway, because you can go back with the Wild Wild West, you can go with the, uh, the different killing of the lynching, uh, the burning of, 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 of communities, uh, the, you, you know, and then you go all the way back to, to, to the uh, Spanish Inquisition, and, and I mean, just the atrocities of man, when you look at the atrocities of man, and you still see it, and, and it creeps into our, our, our into the body, well, look, no, it doesn't, let me, let me show you what It doesn't creep into the body. It, it creeps into the religious body, the religious functions and ministries, but it doesn't creep into those of us who have received Christ as our personal Lord and Savior and reminding every last one of us is that a tree is known by his fruit. Because a lot of cases we sit there, it's his religion. Religious sit there and, and, and talk about you drinking your little wine or your beer or you you going to the club or or you you know you're not praying long enough you don't have the right you can't quote scriptures and and and, and you know you it, it try to create all these facades and 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 and, 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 and uh, form of godliness that people think that that is what makes our faith what makes us part of the body of Christ. What makes us part of the Christ, body of Christ in, <clears throat> in Romans, you can use this one, This you can use others because those who call the name of the Lord shall be saved, is the fact is that in Romans 10 and 10, if you confess with your mouth, listen to this, those who want to be part of the body of Christ, not part of a ministry, because some ministries are jacked up, some ministries are so religious, that they, they forget about the love and the mercy of God. But let's talk about the body of Christ that has the love, that has the mercy. If you confess in Romans 10 and 10, you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart, man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. That's Romans 10, 9 and 10. You, you, you confessing that Christ, that Yeshua, that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. What that means is that to come into the body of Christ is not to have the, the man to be Lord over you, which is what sometimes I believe, well, we know it in ministries and so forth, they want to be Lordship over you. And some of you says, no, it ain't true. That is true. Some ministry, if a ministry try to walk you to destruction or walk you to their way of life, that that that's that's called being Lord over the person opposed to Lord with God. Having God be Lord. 
have Christ be Lord of your life. Because that's the relationship. It's more important to have a relationship with God in the line of with the will of God. Maybe some of you don't know that it's God's will for all mankind to be saved. And then you know that's, that'll pluck the nerves of some people because some people say, I don't want everybody to be saved. That's not your call. It's his call, his will. And, and it's so important for the line with his will and his relationship with him. You know, we want a fellowship. And the emphasis is, is to talk about it, Father's Day today, is the fellowship with him. God the Father. How often do we call God the Father? How many of you, how many of you, all those uh, ministries out there, how often is the emphasis to let the people know God is their Father and is not based on color of skin, it's not based on what country you come from, it's based on the fact that He is the Creator. And for us to be reconnected, we need a savior. We need a savior because we can't get it on our own. Nobody can get it on their own. Nobody has arrived. You can't arrive, but look at this. You can't arrive based on the color of your skin. You can't arrive based on following the 10 commandments that nobody can do. But we know that. People listening to us right now, you know you can't follow, you can't meet all expectations, the requirements of the of, of then uh, somebody who fulfills the law, you can't do it. You know, you can sit there and say, well, I don't smoke, don't chew, don't hang with people to do. But right, bottom line is that you can't. You can't uh, fulfill all the the requirements of the law. And most of you don't understand the requirement, one big piece of the requirement of the law is that you have no other God before you, before him. No other God before him. And see, when we talk about political divide, we got people to sit there and say, well, I'm only a Democrat or I'm a Republican. And they put that before God. They'll put a man before God. And you, and you can't do that. You, look, God is not going to accept it. Some people sit there and put the color of their skin before God. And, and God is not, is not going to be working if we follow the will of man, and we follow the will of ministry, and we follow the will of doctrines. We got to follow the will of the Father. And that's what Christ did when he walked. He said, I don't do what I saw my father do or what my father tells me to do. And in a lot of cases, we do it based on where I heard this, this and that. And, and when we sit there and, and follow a man and know when a man is not bearing good fruit, but we'll do it anyway, some of us. And I'm just telling you, it has to be a fellowship with God. You can't walk in darkness and have fellowship with God. And, and that's what the, uh, my, my slide is going to show you today. To start off with the study, and the fact is that this can you fellowship with God and walk in darkness? Can you fellowship with God and walk in darkness? Listen, to what I'm asking you this question for those of us we talk about this is very important for the eternal, our eternal life, your eternal life, my eternal life. Can we fellowship with God and walk in darkness? And one of the things they're talking about in darkness is hate. Can we fellowship with God and walk in darkness? Can we fellowship with God and, 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 and hate our fellow man? Can we do that? And the answer is no. And that's what we're going to use the scripture today. Because I, I want to point the fact it's so important for you. Stop trying to have a fellowship and don't stop valuing the fellowship with man, whether for a political party, whether for an individual, whether for a ministry, whether for a religious leader, uh, is you if he is not number one and his will 
And you you know what you gotta know is will you read the word for yourself? Hallelujah, praise the Lord. 